Hi friends, uh, uh, we'll continue with ether cleavage reactions. In the previous class, we dealt with acid promoted e uh, ether cleavage reactions. Today, we'll look into uh, nucleophile. nucleophile promoted uh, ether cleavage reactions all right so uh, we start with we take a simple cyclic ether okay so now in the previous class we saw that when the ether cleavage reaction was promoted by the by an acid the h plus ion used to attack on the oxygen of the ether of the cyclic ether uh, in this class we will see what happens when a nucleophile attacks on the ether all right uh, so it's very simple this nucleophile attacks on this nucleophilic center okay so when this nucleophile attacks this carbon so one bond of the carbon is cleaved like this so we are left with o minus and the nucleophile now when this uh, gets a h plus we are left with o h fine so nucleophile attacks on this nucleophilic center this bond breaks oxygen gets the electrons of the bond oxygen gets the negative negative charge nucleophile is attached to this carbon now when h plus is given uh, to the reaction intermediate we get this as the product all right so this is very simple so one point to be kept in mind is that this is an sn2 reaction all right and sn2 reaction will be favored by least hindered carbon so the nucleophile will attack on that carbon which is sterically which is least sterically hindered all right so in this case the both carbons were equally hindered or both carbons had two hydrogen atoms attached to it so this attacked on any of the carbons it doesn't really matter the end products are the same okay so now we'll uh, see another reaction of the same kind where we have the two carbons with different groups attached to it now in this in this case this carbon atom atom has one hydrogen and one methyl group attached to it this is a methyl group as you know all right now this nucleophile will attack on that carbon which is least sterically hindered because this is an sn2 reaction all right so as we compare this carbon and this one this is least sterically hindered so this nucleophile attacks on this and this bond this bond breaks hydrolytically all right so this is the leaving group basically if we look into it very screw um, if we scrutinize this reaction all right so this oxygen gets the negative charge of this bond all right we are left with here comes the nucleophile this is the o minus group and this is the methyl group this is the methyl group now h plus is added subsequently we are left with oh me and the nucleophile is attached over here okay so this is very simple this is opposite to what we learned in the acid promoted ether cleavage reactions in acid what happened is that the electrophile was formed in the first case and subsequently uh, the carbocation that formed used to be the most stable one so the reaction went uh, was uh, like uh, promoted by the stability of the carbocation rather than steric hindrance that we saw in the case of sn2 the acid cleavage reaction the acid promoted reaction was based on the stability of the carbocation in this case this is uh, this is governed by the steric hindrance of the epoxide or the cyclic ether all right so this is very simple okay fine uh, 
Now we move on to the next uh, reaction that is Claisen rearrangement. So the next is Claisen rearrangement. So uh, I'll first write down few points about the reactions. Then we'll look into uh, look into the mechanism of the reaction. So Claisen rearrangement reaction is a react is a reaction in which an allyl, aryl, ether rearranges to rearranges to allyl phenols okay so the temperature condition is about 200 degrees celsius so when an allyl aryl ether is subjected to a temperature condition of 200 degrees celsius all right so it rearranges to an allyl phenol this is it this is what is claisen rearrangement reaction okay so we have uh, allyl and allyl aryl ether on the reactant side, we subject it to a temperature condition of 200 degrees Celsius. It rearranges to give an allyl phenol. All right, fine. So we look into the mechanism of this reaction. So I'll just write down the basic uh, reaction without getting into the mechanism first. Okay, so we have O. CH2, CH, CH2. So this is an ether. This is the aryl part, and this is the allyl part. This is the allyl part, and this is the aryl part. Okay. So when this is subjected to a temperature of 200 degrees Celsius, this is what we get. We get phenol and uh, C okay so this is what we get okay so this is the allyl phenol okay we know this is the phenol this one OH and this is the allylic part attached to it at the ortho position okay so <clears throat> the allylic part is attached to the ortho positions if both the ortho positions are occupied by some other group then this allylic group will attach to the para position okay so i'll write it down if both positions are occupied ch2 ch double bond ch2 now if both positions are both ortho positions are occupied by say methyl group and we apply 200 degrees Celsius so we get this okay if either of the ortho positions is vacant so this allyl group will be trans transferred to that ortho position okay if not this will be transferred to the para position okay so it transfers to the ortho the first priority is the ortho position okay if not present it will go to the para position all right fine so we'll look into the mechanism of this reaction 